I guess that brings us into Gumband a little bit. And so that's a platform that we've developed internally to kind of solve some of these problems. Yeah, I've been wanting to hear about this. So this is, you know, a particularly useful way that we used it for this project was we uploaded all of the assets directly through this content management system. Which for, is Gumband. Right, which yeah. is Gumband. So this system does everything from monitoring the health of the custom exhibit. It allows you to update the content on the exhibit. So awesome. everything from you know, media files to strings to configuration parameters. Nice. It allows you to schedule any of those scenes out into, you know, at times in the future or kind of switch over in real time to a different configuration or scene. And then finally, it does all of the analytics and reporting, all of those business awesome. intelligence tools. So it's building in metrics and understanding usage of the exhibit over time. That stuff is critical. I mean, you know, for feedback, right? Otherwise you're flying blind. Mm -hmm. So I guess as a hardware guy, uh, sometimes it's hard for me to fully grasp, you know, like the the scope of use of a lot of the software packages. Uh, is Gumband purely software or is there a hardware component as well? So there is a hardware component. Um, so with Deep Local's work, like you've heard a lot about, the output is just so varied. Yeah. Sometimes it's purely software, sometimes it's purely a front end. Sometimes it has a detailed cloud component. Sometimes it has Arduino. Sometimes it has custom microcontrollers and nice. you know, mechatronics. So we had to build a system that was flexible enough to handle all of these use cases. That's awesome. So essentially how the platform works is when you define what an exhibit is or what this single installation looks like, that it's going to monitor health content and metrics. You also define all of the subsystems. So you say like this, for the project I was referencing, there was a touch designer component and a Node.js component to it. And so nice. you define here, here are the two components that need to be alive and healthy during you know, all of the ongoing operation of this exhibit. Make sure you're pinging these devices and make sure they're alive. What's your heartbeat interval? I mean, I know that's like low level technical. Yeah, just, no, it's, it's 30 I'm seconds nervous. right now, but it's <laughs> configurable on an exhibit <laughs> level. So when you make that initial call after the server, you say, hey, this is how long I'm gonna phone home because just based on use cases, like some yeah. we need to know to the second latency when they go down and some Amazing. we can honestly tell, you know, a minute or five minutes um, whether or not things are online. So does so. it just have to do with criticality of the exhibit or is it? No, it's more for monitoring all of the systems. Um, a lot of these exhibits are built with a few disparate software systems. So there might be a couple of phones involved or there might be a fleet of Arduinos that are behind a wall controlling things. Nice. And you know, some of it is critical to the exhibit UX and some of it, it can function without, and that's UX even the place. User experience. User ex viewers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, user experience. Um, essentially what we're trying, the the emotion and the message we're trying to convey to the user. Yeah. Uh, everything, just for some context, everything we do at Deep Local is user focused, you know, user experience focused. Yeah. So we're always thinking through, even as the engineers on the project, like, is this achieving the message that we want to tell to our clients, is it demonstrating the technology in the right way? Is it reaching the right audience? Like, is the user going to feel good yeah. and understand what we're trying to convey to them through That's this? That's a very design forward way of doing things. 